I'm Wumi Bello. Welcome to the Wumi Bello Show. Every episode, I'll be bringing you unfiltered stories from old and new friends who've given me access into their most vulnerable and life-changing moments. Each conversation will take you on a therapeutic journey with laughter and refreshing relatability. So I was trying to figure out when was actually my first experience with Mary Mac. You got your hair in your face. Oh, thank you, babe. Take that in for you. So I was trying to think today, like, when when was my first actual experience with Mary And it was your video. It was a video that you had dropped and it went viral, especially on Twitter. Yeah. But I know that a lot of people were like criticizing the video. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it was my my highlight and contour one. That was like my first ever video. Literally, I think one of my favorite videos, yeah. How did you feel about people having so much negativity to say about that video? You know, at that time, I yeah. don't. I think not many people went viral, mm-hmm. especially like in the beauty industry. It was always Americans, or it was like you know our OGs, Patricia yeah, and um, Jenny. Jenny. So for me, I was actually really like I was happy, I was excited because mm-hmm. I didn't care. Like I didn't care what people had to say at that time. I was most confident. I think at uni, with like definitely one of the most comf- confident years. Yeah. So when it was on Twitter, I was very good at taking constructive criticism or yeah. my comments and be like, okay, cool. Next time I'll make it less. And because it wasn't a thing where they weren't coming for me, my look, in a yeah. bad way. They were just saying how, yeah, it's too much. She doesn't need it. She's mm. ruining this, like, she doesn't need that much makeup. So it wasn't well. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, they're coming for my look. So they're literally coming for the fact that I didn't need that much makeup. Because I think yeah. at that point, I wasn't, there was, I don't know if there was like a pause in like the, influ- not if the YouTuber space where like yeah. a lot of people weren't really posting like makeup videos. Yeah. So I just remember seeing that comment and you coming back with, you know, more and more videos. It's like, yeah. damn, you must have had some sort of strength to like carry on. Yeah. Because some of the comments I was seeing back then, I know me back then, I'd have mm-hmm. been like, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I'm not doing this. How did you navigate yourself to come come back and just like carry on doing what you were doing because do you know what it was initially when yeah. i posted the video positive because it wasn't on twitter i didn't oh, okay. i didn't i didn't did you post it on twitter no i yeah i post on youtube yeah. and then um so you know pick up the views a bit more i put it on twitter and i was just like oh before and after yeah and then i think i asked people oh which do you prefer obviously anyone can have an opinion at that point yeah so from that tweet people was retweeting it and then obviously because the before and after was like now i look at it, it was actually mad <laughs> It was actually really mad. I was trying to find so it. I think and people I was like, were oh. like, I'm, I'm like, did I hide it? I don't think I've hidden it. It might be really, obviously it's been seven years on YouTube. Yeah. So it could be all Damn, the way seven down. Seven years. On the answer, like, down yeah. below. But um, yeah, I, I wasn't that bad. I, I was, honestly, I was so like, I didn't care. Like, I just didn't care. Yeah. Like, I, what could I care about? Like, I got views. I was getting a little bit of money here. I was doing what I loved. And yeah. like, people were supporting regardless of the hate. So yeah, at that point I was really happy. Yeah. I'm like interested to know, especially where you've had such an interesting career. Mm-hmm. Um, thinking about some of the things that you've done of late, you know, with I Saw It First, and yeah. just your overall engagement online, your social presence. I want to go back to the child Mariam, the Maz as a baby. So what was that like? What was your upbringing like? Okay, so I am I was born in Nigeria. Yeah. We oh, moved, yeah, I was born I there. That. People are always so shocked, it's so weird, like, yeah, I was born there. Yeah. And then we moved to the UK when I was probably around four, five, and then I went to school in Surrey, so I was brought up predominantly in a white area, so, um, but I had a lot of black friends because, yeah. you know, aunties and, aunt- and uncles and stuff like that, it was never an issue. And I had a really good childhood, like, I can't lie, like, I had, both parents were together, mm-hmm. um, my dad was literally, like, my big supporter, like, I used to be a little athlete back in the day, like, mm. you, you would not believe it, but I was really fast at running, I could have no gone way. to the Olympics with me. Were I you part of the little sprinters? Yeah, I was, I was the first, last one to run, because I was, no, like, 100 metres? Yeah, 100 metres, I was the fastest <laughs> girl at school, and it wasn't something that um, I wanted to do anyways, like, I knew I was always going to be into makeup, but what pushed me into makeup was, the fact that I was the only black girl in my school, I was mm. so undesirable, like, no one fancied me, I never had a boyfriend, like, um, in my school, anything like that, yeah. I did get, like, racial stuff, get picked on, like, things that I would do that was definitely, like, braids, like, where, where I showcase my culture, like, yeah. all things like that, uh, it was just quite embarrassing to do, because, like, growing up, they would ping my hair, like, if I had braids, they'd ping it, what? they used to call me, what, your teachers? No, 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 like, pupils, pupils, oh. yeah, they used to, like, it was just so, un- it was, school life was very uncomfortable, like, yeah. I think it was very uncomfortable, like, little things, you know, just they'll say things that like call me Mufasa, like because of my surname. I went through a stage where people call me King Kong. It was, it was horrible. Yeah, like I remember one. I'll tell you a really funny story. It's <laughs> really bad. <laughs> I remember one time. Yeah, like, like it was so weird. Like if you, if I was black, yeah. I couldn't have a big bum. Basically, like it was just you couldn't have a big bum. But when a white person had like an, a big bum, mm. it was so nice. So it was just so, it was so weird. Like growing up, like yeah, I didn't, I did not like school. Because I don't think I had enough black people, mm-hmm, and I don't think people really understood me and things like that. Even something as simple as taking jollof rice to school, I couldn't. <laughs> Wait for lunch. <laughs> yeah, for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> it's a bit ignorant. 
ignorant, man. Yeah. Like, yeah, it was very uncomfortable. Yeah. College was really good. Um, at school as well, though. At school, I was very angry. Like, I used really? to fight. People would know me. Really? Oh, you? I, yeah, I'll fight you. Know? What? I would fight. Yeah, I'd fight at school. I got excluded at school and everything. What? Yeah, for fighting. Just because, like, they why were you fighting? So they couldn't fucking fight with me. No, I, I was bullied in year seven, and yeah. I had a fight in year eight. And then since then, no one tried it with me. They, they could never. Now. Yeah. So yeah, it was hard, but I, I just, I don't explain it. It was a very uncomfortable. Exp- I think school for me was very uncomfortable. That's the only way I can describe it. How was the transition from going to school to going to uni for you? Oh my god, I can't, I'm not gonna lie. I I was just like, what's Afrobeats? Like it, that's how that's how bad. Like no. I I generally wasn't really uh, into Afrobeats like that. Like mm. I knew of like, what was it like? Um, you know when you go to hall parties, yeah, that kind of vibe. But actually, okay. like Wiz Kid, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I learned all that. I really got into that wow. at uni. All my friends at uni, like. It was so crazy because even before that, um, mm-hmm. I didn't know Steph until the second term of uni. Yeah. So when I met Steph in the second term of uni was when I was like, yeah, I, I felt, how to explain it, I just felt comfortable. Mm. I felt like, yeah, this is, I felt myself. And like, I think the best version of me came from uni. How did you yeah. feel then at that point, like feeling like you were like the best version of yourself looking back at, you know, your previous encounters with, yeah. you know, some of the students who went to your school? How mm. did that comparison make you feel? I just felt, I, I feel like from, it was upwards and onwards from uni, if that mm. makes sense. I like like the YouTube video, yeah. meeting my group of friends, I'm still yeah. friends with them now. Yeah. Vamp came from uni, like, I just feel like it was the right thing. I don't mm. explain it, like, seeing how I was at school, I was so angry, like, I would fight. Mm. I, I don't know, I was just such an idiot. I didn't even try to really, like, I don't know, I was just so negative. Yeah. But then uni was when everything was like, yeah. Like, I was just so happy. Obviously, there's been boy dramas at uni, don't worry. Like, <laughs> everyone goes with them. But as a whole, I loved it. And I think I found the best, like, me, who I really am. Was yeah, definitely in came uni. From uni yeah. So after leaving uni, I think, I don't know if this was because, I, it's at this point, it's because I was following you. So I yeah. just remember you were working at H&M. Yeah. I don't know. Did you post that on your story? Yeah, like, some I, used to, I used to post everything. I like, actually, I feel like yeah, I remember this like, thing. I used to have, like, on my way to work, guys, I'm on my way to work now. <laughs> and then I tell them about, oh, guys, this mad customer. Like, I was very open. Yeah. Like, it was kind of like taking them with me. On like, journey. Because they knew I was doing YouTube. Yeah. They knew at the same time I still, still had a working. job. Like, what can you I were do? a manager, weren't you? At H&M? Yeah, I got to say just been a manager. How yeah. was that? It was good. Like, I thought that was going, I, it was my plan B, I'll be honest. I thought, okay, if doing, because I always knew, like, I wanted to do some sort of fashion and makeup. It yeah. was actually the Kardashians. <laughs> at, when I was at college, I used yeah. to just love Kim so much. Why are we the same? <laughs> I loved her. I used to kind of love her. <laughs> my mom. Kim's and then, mom. honestly, I loved Kim so much. Like even uni, like some of the things I used to wear, I used to wear like a bright pink blazer. Yeah. And, like people that know, no, I used to put <laughs> dress up for uni just because of it made me feel good. Mm-hmm. You know, school I didn't get to feel good, so makeup made me feel good. Yeah. And you know, I was doing that a lot in uni. Mm. Like I was so confident. And yeah, like yeah, I think I drifted a little bit. How did you? <laughs> you did it, but how did you feel making that? Um, I don't. I think you also posted this though. It was like your yeah. last day at H and M when you oh, decided yeah. that you were gonna quit. How did you know that this that was that was the right time for you to leave? Because that was your stable job. That was your yeah, that income. was literally my income. Yeah. Um, do you know what it was actually? Luckily, so yeah. basically, it was my how mine worked was I was technically after survival. I was technically still in H and M. Really? Yeah. Like I, I think basically I kept moving stores because yeah. I, was, I was actually quite good. So there was always pushing me to another store to help yeah. out, or you know, I, I. I was working in like Epsom and then mm-hmm. I went back to Red Hill, which is where I'm from. Yeah. Um, so I was moving because of that, helping stores yeah. and just because of obviously what, convenience. What were you doing there, by the way? Like as a, as a manager, what did your actual job role Okay. Entail? So basically a normal job role was like a HM manager back then for yeah. me would be like, obviously come in early. <laughs> <laughs> come in early, um, you know, look at the boat up, plan mm. the, my people on my floor, yeah. um, do holiday sick, things like oh, that. Okay, and you. then obviously I'll still do work, like be on till, mm-hmm. clear rails. Mm-hmm. So it was the same thing, but with just a bit more responsibility, responsibility. and I yeah. didn't have to do as much as everyone else, mm-hmm. like on the floor, basically. Got you, That's got how you, I got felt. You, got you, got you. So it was good, I liked it. So how did you know that, that the time that you left was the right, was the right time for you to leave? Um, I think it was I think it was a lot of gasness because mm. I left I literally left after the show. Yeah. So I was I felt very like, yeah, like I've just come out of the show. Yeah. Everything's gonna be <laughs> glitz and glamour now, like I'm big time now. It was that kind of vibe come, coming out of it, I can't lie. And um, yeah, I just I just I just handed in my res- like handed in my notice. I was gonna do two weeks mm-hmm. and I feel bad because that's not me. I'm not that kind of person. Like I always like to work to the end, but I just got me. I've got gas stuff. <laughs> Bye guys, deuces. So yeah, so I just knew it was the right time. I felt like I felt I felt like we were gonna be fine. I knew that we'll get some sort of money, even if it's yeah. just three months, and then I'll go back to a different retail. I always mm. had that, yeah, let me enjoy it, let me live the best life because I went straight up to Gloucester. 
after. So it was so hard going back to Red Hill to work. So yeah. I was like, yeah, F this, I'm, you know. Let's actually talk about Survival of the Fittest a bit, yeah. right? <laughs> because that was a massive transition in your life. It was literally like Mariam and it was like Mariam Musa now. Oh so right, let's yeah. talk about how you actually entered um, Survival of the Fittest. How did that come about? Yeah, so basically, um, I, I was actually meant to go on Love Island. Mm -hmm. Do you know the season with Alex and Olivia Bowen? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I basically, know. I was going to be a bombshell during that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I think I've told people a couple of times. <laughs> Got a bit happy there. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to be a bombshell and it was all good, but it was just something I knew, yeah. After seeing what was actually happening on the show, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, my mum's not going to be happy with me being on the show. Oh, yeah, that's I, when it was really explicit. Yeah, it was very explicit. And yeah. I know, I don't know. I, uh, you know, I know how I am just around normal people. So yeah. I'm, I'm so free. I'm so happy. But yeah. to be put, to have that on camera, especially for my background, mm. no, it wouldn't work. So I was like, obviously I let them know, yeah, it's just not, it's just not the right time. Mm. And I was actually kind of gutted because I really like bought clothes for real, like really? everything. So, so was, you were really like set to go yeah, on. Yeah, proper ready set to go on. They even called me like saying, yeah, this is the guy, do you know who you like? And I was oh. like, yeah, I like this. I can't remember who I said at the end, but he had brown hair. I remember he had brown hair. <laughs> but yeah, proper ready. And then I said no. And then a couple, a, a year or two later, um, they actually messaged me again saying we've got another show called Survival of the Fittest, it's not a love show, so yeah. you don't have to worry about that. And it was set in South Africa. So I was like, okay, I've got, I hadn't taken any holiday in yeah. H&M because mm -hmm. I'm such a, I'm one of them people that really love their job. <laughs> so I never took holiday. Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, why not? I've worked really hard. Like, what's it to lose? I had all my, so I used all my three weeks holiday because yeah. it was three weeks and I took a week off. So mm -hmm. I had bought a whole month in South Africa. And then I just left and I went on the show and yeah, I wouldn't, I, one of the best things I could have done. Like I don't, I don't regret it. Actually. From, the, from like the, the videos and the clips and some of the episodes yeah. that I saw on the show, you genuinely just looked like you had the best. It, was time. Good, it, yeah. it genuinely looked like a good time. So you came off the show, and then there was like a big transition because you went. Your platform went from being Mariam Moose's yeah. platform to Mariam and Warren's platform. Yeah, right? yeah, that was. And weird, yeah. I remember watching that, and I was like, "Oh damn, she changed it. You changed the name of your YouTube channel." Yeah, I stupidly. And stupidly I was like, wait, 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 yeah. what, what, what is going on here? Do you regret that decision? Um, a little bit, mm. like only because the reason why I changed it because I generally just believe I generally like you know when you're generally in a relationship, yeah, and you're in there with pure attention. Yeah. Like I'm how I am is if I'm up, I want my partner to be up. If I'm yeah. up, I want my friends to be up. So mm -hmm. if I'm in a good position, I'm gonna bring him with me no yeah. matter what. Like I built those subscribers, yeah. so but I'm happy to do a couple's channel with him. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean to help him, mm -hmm. whatever. So when I done it, it was obviously to do fun videos. I would have still, I was still posting my stuff on mm. my set days, but it was going to be a thing because I genuinely thought we were going to be together for like, I didn't see us Did breaking you? up. Yeah, because in the relationship, there was no problem. Mm. Like for me, how we were, there was no problem. So mm. I wouldn't have thought we would What made you so sure that this was going to be it at that I point? I mean, I lived there. Like mm. the things we were talking about, the the, the things that, so that we spoke, it just, I didn't doubt it at all. Like I genuinely felt like, yeah, like, because we were such good friends. I think what it was with me and one were very good friends. Like, honestly, like, out of that relationship, like, regardless of the bad, he did make me so, like, made me laugh mm. so much. Like, there was a genuine friendship there. Yeah. So I think because we had that, like, and I felt like we could talk about anything, I felt like, yeah, this is us. Like, we're set. Like, no, mm. no, nothing. Like, yeah. yeah. So I, I gave my all. I, I literally was like, yeah, it's all or nothing. So I gave all. Like, that's how, the only way I can describe it, because that's just how I am. There was a yeah. lot of com there was like a lot of conversation about you know the um, relationship breaking up and yeah. how that and I don't really feel like I have like a full understanding yeah. of like you know how the breakup came about and the question that kind of sits in my head is for for you yeah now that you know has it been a year or so it's been like it's a been year like, and a half it's been about two years two now. yeah it's, Damn, okay. like, it's been about two years now. So like yeah, two got, years yeah. on when when looking back when do you think was the moment where you were like yeah this is not it this is not happening anymore um. It's a weird one because the first, because obviously the he that the reason why we broke up was because he cheated on me yeah. again. Um, he cheated on me the first time. I don't think I didn't tell any. I didn't even tell my best friend because yeah. I knew she would have been like leave, but mm. I didn't want to leave. Have you ever been mm. in a situation where you don't tell the problems in your relationship because mm -hmm. you know, like deep down, you know they're gonna I tell can't me. I can't stop talking, so I have to say. Like, Do just, you know? I mm -hmm. and I'm so influenced by the opinions of my friends. Yeah. If my if Steph was to tell me something, I'll it'll be sitting on my mind, yeah. and I'll be like, mm, she's right. So I knew. Let me not tell her because she'll tell me the right thing mm -hmm. to do, and I didn't want to do the right mm -hmm. thing. I was thinking, but I'm happy. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So um, when he cheated the first time, no one knew. It was only between me. Matisse knew at the time because yeah. um, the ex messaged Matisse. Like, she wouldn't have known. No one would have known. It's like my business. But she obviously told Matisse because I think she thought me and her were really close because we she were at the time. Were really yeah, close, we yeah. were at the time, but 
even if me and Warren broke up, I wouldn't have told Matisse. Like, we weren't close like that. If I'm not telling my best friend, why would I tell Matisse? Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah, we're close, we're not on the show, but for me, like, for me to trust you, it takes a lot. Like, yeah. it takes a lot. So, um, so yeah, so I didn't, so when he did cheat the first time, in my head, I'd mentally known if he does it again, I'm going and there's no hesitation. Yeah. So I made sure that I was certified, like, I would say, like, yeah. My management knew, mm -hmm. like, I remember my management knew because I didn't know what to do. Yeah. And then they were, they were really, it was so funny, they were so hard to get, it took them a long time to get over the first time. Really? Yeah, because they're my friends. Yeah. And, like, it's so oh, hard. Yeah, they're that, my yeah. friends and my manager, mm -hmm. so they have to learn how to separate the two on both, for both things. So the first time was when I, yeah, I checked out completely. Like, not checked, I had to explain, I checked out in a sense where, like, I knew if he does it again, because I knew he was capable of it, mm. I'm in a position where it's easy just to go. Mm. I think before it was it was hard to go, but the second time I said, if you do it again, I'm going. Mm. So and when he did it and I found out, I knew already, I was mm. like, yeah, I'm done. You mentioned <laughs> that you, you wanted to um, protect him a lot, like, because he had stuff that he was going through, yeah. et cetera. Why, do you, why was it that you wanted to protect him so much, especially considering, like, you cheat. I'm guessing he cheated on you with someone who was Caribbean. Um, was yeah, she was Jamaican. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he was comparing Africans and you know Jamaicans, yeah. etc. Why did you feel like you wanted to protect him so much? Not that I wanted to protect him, but um, I know what social media is like. Yeah. So um, even just off of the bat of like people going on his comments and stuff, like I was like, oh, like I've got right to die. Mm. But because obviously I've seen some raw stuff yeah. that not everyone's gonna see, and yeah. I've spoke, I've listened to some raw stuff mm -hmm. that he's felt. Um, I just, I just how I am. I don't want to be the reason why he was to ever do something, mm. or do you know what I mean? I yeah. would never want to be that person. Mm. And that's just how I am. Even, even if the worst person did something to me, I've had some really shitty friends in the past mm. and really shitty situations. But it's just not in my nature to, and I explain it to go in on someone for them yeah. to be low because yeah. I'll get over it. Like, mm -hmm. I know I'll be fine. Yeah. I've got an amazing support system. I don't believe all his friends are support system. He yeah. doesn't have that. And wow. I feel like he had a really good, I, was, I know I was a good person and mm -hmm. I know like, it's such a shame how it ended because if it was a thing where he wanted to be with his ex, mm -hmm. I would have been like, I get, like, that's fine. I gave him, there was a lot of history there. So I gave him multiple times. I said to him like, do you need to sort things out? Like, do you want mm -hmm. us to take a back seat? Whilst I had these wow. conversations, like I'm not an, un I'm the most understanding person you'll ever meet. Mm. And it was a shame that he just couldn't because it would just save me to be in a position where to this day, like I still feel a bit like shit about myself yeah. and question certain things about myself. Yeah. And he, yeah, and I feel like it would have been a good, it would have been calm. Like I would have, I wish him the best now. Like mm. I'm happy that he's happy. There's no, I don't have any ill mm. against him, but as in how I feel now, like it took a lot for me to get to a stage where I feel a bit better. And even then I'm still a bit like, mm. Mm. What do you think is the thing has been the biggest thing that that relationship taught you about yourself? Um, I think it definitely taught me that you have. Like, I feel like as a female, you kind of always have to have. You you got to be ready to. I don't know if that's a bad thing, but I feel like you you should be ready that the rug can be pulled underneath your feet at any yeah. point. Mm -hmm. And I feel like as a female, you should always know that just know that if a guy you and a guy should break up or leave that you're fine mm. i think there's a feel of like That's for a lot it. of us that oh my god like what am i i think yeah yeah it was a lot of what am i about warren mm. like i because there was, was a lot of what? what am i about warren okay because i think what i would see on socials was like i was too much for him so that was i was too much People i was yeah that? like they would say that i was too much for him in what him, sense though like, like my personality, personality wow. or like you can tell he's not into her. <gasps> like, imagine seeing that already, and you're like, what are these people on about? And wow. he's better than like, no, babe, they don't know what they're talking about. Wow. To then obviously have all that happen, mm. it's so embarrassing. Yeah. Like, and I think a lot of people didn't want the relationship to do well. Like, yeah. obviously, they don't want the relationship to do well. Mm. I feel like to a lot of people, they didn't see me as desirable mm. um, compared to Warren, and mm. that's fine. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like, that's just what it is. I think with any relationship, yeah. especially into relationship, mm -hmm. um, if the black girl isn't as beautiful as what they expect the white boy to be, like, I think mm. they always come for her, and that's what well, I I got a lot of that. Basically. Do you agree with that though? That even for oh no, not now. You okay. mad? <laughs> All right, I was gonna say. No, I, like, I think hope then, not. then, yeah, then yeah, yeah. definitely that was like playing in your head. Yeah, I definitely. Think, so you obviously the, the channel was now like a, a interracial. Um, channel yeah when you had to now move back into a space where this is now your platform and you're yeah. now rebuilding yourself and yeah. as maria musa was there ever a moment where you thought i need to be in in this interracial relationship to kind of maintain 
my present my online presence um when i was with him yeah oh def yeah definitely because it was it was it was blatant because mm. when it was videos by myself they would get hardly any views mm. and it would really not hardly any but it would yeah. be ha like half do you understand yeah so i understood that okay okay i understood that, okay people like us together more than they like me by myself so there was that pressure and also when you start something publicly let's be real you don't want you don't want to let the haters feel like they've ah, won, they've won. They've won. and mm -hmm. you know you're gonna keep riding that wheel till it mm -hmm. is it driving the car to the wall falls off or something like that you know that <laughs> something, whatever. <laughs> something like that so that was what it was for a point but um I, I feel like people noticed that we did i started slowly not doing as much videos with him mm. it was more like my video yeah because i just felt like in my gut i just you know when your gut a girl's gut's always right somebody's telling me always. something's coming always. something's coming always. i just felt like yeah i feel like he's cheating again there's something that was telling me and um yeah he was I think you've done such an amazing job and I don't oh, know if you give yourself accolades and enough accolades to in a sense that you've managed to like navigate your way and you've you know you've now accepted and like have grown into this Maria Musa yeah. human being that you are which I love and I feel like I've watched you, oh, thank you. do so many things that you know want to dive into and oh, for example the I saw it first campaign that you did which was crazy firstly how did you find that being oh. the first a black influencer to have a fast fashion yeah. Fast, yeah like it's it was, crazy it was, a, it was such a surreal moment because i remember when i started doing styling videos mm -hmm. i would always be like oh, i just love to have a collection like, like i'll make this i'll make so much money for this brand like, i can do it i yeah. know i can and um when we started working for iso at first i think one of the first things the girls like vamp asked me was yeah. like, okay so Maz, what is the end goal one thing i love about them they're always asking like what do you want and yeah. i said i would love to have a collection yeah. and then we worked with the brand and then they asked us, remember we met the owner and go, so what is it, what is Ma Mary Musa and um, I saw it first, what is, what's going to happen? What the owners ask that. Yeah, yeah, wow. the owner, yeah. Um, and I said, I would love a collection. He was like, yeah, I can see that happening. And then we worked with the team, obviously we planned it before COVID, so yeah. we had to wait, put it off. And then they were like, yeah, let's do it. And we done it and, oh, honestly, yeah, it was good. I got to have my friends on there, you were part of it as well. I loved so, it. So, yeah, of course. That, was, that was such a sick experience, and I feel like you were really in your zone on that day, that whole day. Although, like, I know you were stressed, stressed out, out. And you, but you were still so happy. Because, do you know what was? I think I got happy when I was with you, sort the most. Oh, yeah, I like in the table scene. Yeah, the table scene, and, oh and my we were walking down, like, it felt good. That's no, when I it felt was. good. It was, yeah. Did that point, at that point in your career, would you feel like that was your moment where you were like, do you know what, I'm giving myself accolades, I've done it? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, I felt like yeah, we done it. Like, and I explain it. It's it's always that fear of like, obviously you want everyone to support. It's always yeah. that scared, it's that fear of like, people mm -hmm. actually going to support. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like at the end of the day, I got to this stage, and I'm very proud of myself. I feel like the styling videos, all that stuff that I done, paid sense. off. So mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, like yeah, that's when I did realize, okay. Cool. And the support online was crazy. Yeah, it felt like every single conversation I was being had online was mm. literally just about your collection. Oh, I'm so happy. That that warms my heart. Like. Did you not feel that, that that was like what was going on? I was so nervous. I'm really? So, yeah, I was just so nervous. Like I was mm -hmm. so anxious. You know, you one thing it's so funny. My thing was, oh my God, how do I look in the photos? I hope yeah. you look okay. I hope you can tell that I'm happy. Like yeah. stuff like that. But um, no, in general, like I, I didn't have to explain it. It was definitely a point where I was just like, yeah, okay. I feel like I've accomplished it now. I love yeah. that. Leaving, considering like you left H&M and mm -hmm. then now you're working with like a fast fashion brand with like your own actual collection. Do you feel like you are doing what you are supposed to be doing? Fifth, okay, so basically it's a funny thing. God. I know I'm doing what I'm doing, yeah. but I know that God definitely wants me to involve him more. Mm, so I'm doing what, what I'm doing, but without obviously saying much about God. Mm -hmm. So I know that I need, I'm need. i happy to do what I'm doing, but yeah. every now and again, I do need to always let people know that, yeah, it's God, and mm. that's it, yeah. But God's happy, feel, but... Do you feel like you want to bring that more onto your platform then? Um, do you know what? I want my... Pa I, I definitely want it to be natural. Yeah. I'm not someone that's going to be like, oh, I'm this... Home. I'm not. Like, mm. But I do find a relationship with God so important and like God in everything I do is very important. Mm. So it's, I think it's good to just... Just throw a pinch in there yeah. for my followers mm -hmm. and my subscribers and stuff like that. So yeah, I think God's telling me like, come on, mention me every now and again. <laughs> okay. Like, okay. Tag me here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so <laughs> With both of us kind of being on that you know, in this online space, I feel like yeah. you know what I'm about to say here when I say that there's new people walking in yeah. now so every single day, the conversation feels like it's endless. Yeah. How do you navigate your way through those emotions where it feels like there's a new girl here, there's a new girl oh, there? Yeah. What What are some of your steps in terms of navigating that? And if there are any, like, do yeah. you actually feel like you're doing it properly or is that something that you struggle with too? Um. So do you mean like as in, like when there's kind of like yeah, when a there's bit like of competition, mm -hmm, would you say? Yeah. Um, I feel like our job is always going to be competition because yeah. at the end of the day, like, 
we are seeing so many beautiful girls mm-hmm. do things, get collabs that you're thinking, how come they got, like, it's always that, how come they got that collab? Like, why are what, they working with that brand? Brands? Like, do they even do that? Like, a lot, we get, there's a lot of that. Um, what I try to do mm-hmm. um, is, like I said, I definitely feel like my friends reassure me a lot. Mm-hmm. They always say, like, Maz, do you know who you are? Like, just when every time I'm feeling down, I'm like, oh, I just feel like my thing's really bad. I'm like, Maz, do you know who you are? Mm. So they help me with things like that. But also, of recent, I just don't spend much on time online anymore. Do you know? No, it's so. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Mm. I don't know if it's because of COVID yeah. or just because of I don't know the generational change. Because there's a there's, there's a, a big, big shift now. Yo, I there's thought I was the only one shift. feeling it. There's a mad shift now. Like, yeah, it's not the same. At like all. even I sometimes feel like the why like this. I feel like there's a pressure to always be a designer at the moment. There's a pressure to have designer. If trip, it's not Jeffrey Miss or whatever the man, is called, like if, if it's, it's not, if yeah. like it has to be something. Yeah, it has to be something. And seeing that a lot from. Seeing that, you feel like, oh, do I need to do it? And then also you feel like, you feel shit if you don't have it as well. Not that you can't afford it, but mm-hmm. it's not, it's never been you. Mm-hmm. And social media is making you feel like you have to be that. That's never been something that I've ever been into. Mm-hmm. Like, I treat myself. Because that's what's so interesting yeah. about you, like, from what a lot of fucking guys I remember. And I don't even know if you remember when we did that. Um, was it, what was it, Blogger Market? Or oh, whatever. Yeah, market One agent. of the main things that you said to me is like, I'm not buying that designer thing. What's the point when I can get this bag? <laughs> and you like, showed me these shoes. And like, they look like the LV <laughs> shoes. I'm going to buy this. One. So to even hear you say that you you all had yeah. a moment where it's like, do I need to get those yeah. things? How do you feel knowing that this is where you started off being someone who's like, I don't need to buy designer yeah. bags to like or designer things yeah. to fit in or be me. Yeah. To now thinking like, wait, is this what I need to do yeah. to almost grow? To grow a little bit, yeah. Because what what I see on socials is you know the amazing aesthetics, yeah, the designer bags that are like five thousand pounds, two thousand pounds. Yeah. It's like okay, but. That's just doesn't, that's never been me. Yeah. There's such a pressure, and I don't know what it is. I feel like it's a pressure as well to have made it mm. so young. And we need to not stop normalizing this thing. You know what I'll say? I'll, do you know what's so funny? I was looking at a tweet yeah, the other day. I was like, someone was like, I bought a house at 23. And I was just like, that's good. But why are you going to say it's 23? Okay, you're making us 27 year olds, 30 year olds, all shit for not having a house. You know what I mean? Good for you. But so I feel like sometimes, I don't know, social media makes you really feel shit. Like mm. when people say, like, oh man, you've done so well, social media makes you feel like I'm not doing enough. Wow. That's like, mm. uh, that's how I feel sometimes. I feel like, oh shit, I haven't, I don't, haven't bought a house yet. Mm. Oh my God, I might not earn enough money. Mm. Do I need to, there's so many things that's like, no, that wasn't my plan. My plan, you know when you wanted to get your house. There's a plan, but then you see everyone else doing things. And that it's like, do I need to change my change plan? Change my plan, yeah. yeah. So yeah. So how do you refrain yourself from doing, changing that plan? My boyfriend, 100%. <laughs> he'll be like, chill out. I love that. <laughs> He's such a realist. He's yeah. so straight to point. He'll tell me, he's like, but why are you comparing yourself? Mm. Like, if I'm in a moment, he'll just tell me, but, do you know who you are? Yeah. Like, he does definitely makes me see the bigger picture. Mm-hmm. Sometimes he's so long sighted. I'll see something like I'll see that glut. Like for example, I'll see that um, wine glass. If yeah. he would have seen like the bottle that and the date it came from <laughs> and all stuff like that. So he that. he really brings me down and basically just makes me kind of like remember. Basically, it's not like a race. Safe, yeah, you're fine. Like yeah. everything's good. You know what your plan is. I'm here to help. Mm-hmm. Blah blah blah. And then like, that helps friends as mm. well. So I always say have a good circle. Mm. Like if you have a good circle, like everything else that goes on the world, I your fact like that. it honestly it I won't feel like that. nothing. So, yeah. you, you've had a, your fair share of like online controversial <laughs> moments. Yeah. Right, so let's dive into that because it's a big topic. Okay? Yeah. So I know that there's been conversation around bleaching, around yeah. you know, um, is it fillers? Yeah, all my fillers. All and these, stuff. yeah, all these other things. And I remember there was like one day where it was like huge. Yeah, it was quite and I was like, what yeah. the hell is going on? It was on Twitter. It was on Instagram. In those moments, because I can imagine how hard they must mm-hmm. be having so many people have so many opinions about you yeah. so publicly for everyone yeah. to see you. How do you, and I know that you're quite a sensitive person in the way, in the way that I am. Yeah. How do you deal with those moments? Um, so this, this has definitely been the shift in, this is definitely the shift of my anxiety, like yeah. from that, that whole situation. Really? Yeah. Like I don't think since that situation I've ever kind of been fully like calm. Wow. Like literally yesterday, me and Steph were talking about like what's the highest points and then what's your lowest. And mm. she said, "I know yours." I was like, "What?" She goes, "When all that filler stuff happened." I was like, "Yeah." How was she your was lowest? There. She was there. She mm. knew what I was going mm. through. So um, it was just hard, mm-hmm. man. Like I understand that. I understand that people have an opinion. Yeah. But oh, I don't know. It's just I hated that. All I can say is I hated that mm. period. I hated it so much. And people coming for the way I looked and stuff. Usually, people are usually. I've never. Ha- I mean, I had it with Warren. Yeah. But. It's always been quite cool, but yeah. people are really coming for my appearance and just being nasty. And to this day, I still get some comments on it and stuff. Some of it like, mm, whatever, like, yeah. 
do those moments where people are so aggressive with their with their thought process yeah. make you want to step back from having an online presence? All the th- yeah, a lot of the really? time. Because I'm just like, I, like when I think about who I am, mm. I don't even have like much influence of friends where they're like, I'm in people's like, you know when you're mm. very involved, I'm not even involved like that. Like, yeah. you know my circle of friends. Yeah, like it's like Vance, you. Steph, mm-hmm. my best friend, mm-hmm. my two guy friends, that's yeah. it. Like that's how I've always been like. So I don't get involved in drama with people online. Yeah. I don't ever come to people online. Mm-hmm. I don't even make outlandish opinions or comments. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm quite warm and inviting to people. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I was so open before, yeah. like before that for this stuff, so open. Yeah. So when I get stuff, it's like, but why? I don't get what I'm doing to annoy you. I don't even fluent designer stuff. I don't create you this lifestyle mm-hmm. that, do you know what I mean? I don't yeah. give off any of that energy. I try yeah. to just show people how I dress without having to be designer or buy new things mm. and stuff like that. So it does get kind of like, okay, so what am I doing wrong? Like, I don't get it. Even if I was to do all this stuff, like bleaching or filler and stuff like that, mm. if I don't promote anything or if I'm not affecting anyone or talking about it or pushing towards it, why does it affect you? Do you mm. know what I mean? My yeah. brand's never been this. I've about never, that, yeah. I've never been like, oh, or this yeah. person, like, you know, love this. I, yeah. I, I, I'm like, why, why preach something where I'm still dealing with something? Why mm. would I preach about self-confidence mm-hmm. when I'm not the most confident person? Yeah. So I'm not being even false online. Do you yeah. get it? So when I get some stick, I'm like, oh, leave me alone, man. Just let me live my life. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you feel like perhaps social media question your questions your blackness? Oh, yeah, Where, definitely. like, I know that you... you <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I guess like your deme- demeanor yeah. and guess your your voice and the way yeah. you articulate yourself isn't exactly how people would expect every black woman yeah. to sound. So do you feel like because of that, people kind of tend to question your blackness a lot? Yeah, all the time. Like I, I used to get I used to get messages like, "Oh, you're so whitewashed." And I'm just thinking, how? Mm. I do want to know what that is because mm-hmm. I don't understand. All my friends I are think black. I remember you speaking about this actually. Yeah. In a video, like mm. they sound whitewashed, but I don't get it. My friends are black. I'm black. I love being black. Like I don't get what people are say by that. I'm really in touch with my culture. Yeah. I just don't get it, and it's like, oh, I wish I didn't. Broadcast my white boyfriend on YouTube. Do you, maybe. Think, do you think that where, that's where it comes from? Yeah, because people think I just like white boys, and it's mm. such a weird thing. Because I've date like my first ever boyfriend was black. Like mm-hmm. my first time was with a black guy. Like yeah. it's always been black guys. I just because of the area. Group. Yeah, like <laughs> it's just because of the area I brought mm-hmm. up with. Um, I I grew up in a white area. Yeah. It's probably why I've got the my the accent, I guess. Mm-hmm. Or you know, I I went clubbing with my white friend, so the music at the time was club. Like I yeah. loved it, yeah. but I also I love all kinds of music. Like I'm so open. Like I can you can I can go to any club with you and yeah. have the best time. That's how I am. So when I get a lot of that, I'm like, oh my god, what do you want what from now? me? Mm-hmm. Like I don't get it. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So you know how you said um, you were saying to Steph. Steph yeah. is your best friend. For those who don't know, um, <laughs> I think everyone knows that. My love, best I'm obsessed with Steph. <laughs> So but you were saying to Steph, or Steph was saying to you that she yeah. felt like that moment when you had that, when you had that moment, controversial yeah. moment online, kind of changed you yeah. or like was your toughest moment. Would you say it's changed you? And if so, how? Um, yeah, it's definitely changed me because it's made me really understand what, um, not cancelled so much, but what, um, what negative backlash is. Mm. Um, and I had the first time with my appearance, like bad, like negative, negative, like as in not even things like, oh, the makeup too much, as in, oh, mm-hmm. she's ruined her face, things. Oh. Yeah, I saw that. And then Steph tried to defend me. <laughs> it was so funny. Steph tried to defend, him, defend me. And I don't even re- really like retaliate on Twitter, but yeah. then she came for Steph and it just became messy. And I was like, oh, it's just horrible. But yeah, it changed me as a mm-hmm. person in the sense of like, I'm, I'm definitely, I think a lot of my fe- followers, I'm a, I'm a bit more disconnected. I've had with social media, yeah, really? like with my followers, definitely. I really? had this girl. No, I, I like I can't lie. Yeah, you, you feel, actually feel, no, because before you were very much like good morning. I'm gonna film two videos today. This is yeah. my like, this is my routine, say, blah, yeah. blah blah blah. And you don't actually do a lot of that no, anymore. I don't know what wow. it is. Um, what happened? Yeah, so I don't do a lot of that anymore because I feel really disconnected because of the whole filler thing and then the whole other drama. Yeah. So and then all the war and stuff and just people's real opinion of you. Mm. Like, it's just like rah like. I don't get it. I'm, I'm that person that obviously you're talking about. But yeah. hi guys, welcome. Yeah. That's just how I That's am. Just, yeah. So when you're seeing like, okay, they're not taking any of that. They're just taking other stuff and like running with it. It makes me feel like, why am I giving my best version to people that don't appreciate it? Mm. So I was, that's why I probably disconnected. It was funny because the girl said something like, she messed me like, oh, have you disconnected your followers because of, you know, you're going through some things. And it's like, wow. A follower like, said this to you. Yeah. Wow. So they know. That's how connected yeah. I was to my followers. Yeah. Like, I love them. Like I, I'm just, I'm trying to rebuild it mm-hmm. at the moment, but it's really, it's hard. Why do you find it hard? I don't know. It's that feel of like, I feel like, you get, I just have a feel like feeling irrelevant, no one mm-hmm. care about you anymore, so why? Mm-hmm. Why am I forcing it? Do what I, do what I can do, hope for the best. Mm-hmm. So that's how I feel at the moment. So, yeah. 
It's been we, hard, yeah. We were talking about the online yeah. culture presence or whatever shifting a little bit where it feels like the gen- younger generation are kind of, you know, doing their thing. Do you feel like when you think about all these things, you know, between the controversial moments you've had, the younger generation, the competition online and all these other elements, do you feel like you are almost getting to a point where you want to shift your platform into not necessarily being the influencer marrying yeah. to something else? Yeah, that's what I that's why the get. vibe you're getting. Yeah. yeah. So like do you know what it's so weird because there's so many things that Mariam that was that hi guys welcome wants to do like when I have a family I'd love to just pre- even my pregnancy yeah. the, the, that Mariam would have been surprised mm. and post you know like all things like that about my pregnancy because yeah. I'm open like I love sharing things with people yeah. relatable stuff I love getting advice yeah. but because of all the other stuff and yeah. even people comment about how I look after Mimi sometimes so, so what? someone was like well, she can cle- she clearly feels like this. I'm just like, this is her personality. I know oh my, my dog. God. Like, so even things like that, I'm like, you come from my dog. Mm. I, I get so angry. Like, I, I probably reply back with mm. a, sa- like a proper sassy comment. And I block yeah. you. So if I was to showcase my kid, that Mariam, that's mm. very defensive and knows what it's like to have a lot trolling, I feel like, mm, I don't really want to do it. Mm-hmm. Like, like, do you understand? I feel at the moment yeah. I'm very like, my person is just pretty, like cute, I guess, nice photos. There isn't much more. The odd, like, creative collab mm. but it's just that fear and anxiety I say sometimes my friend would be like oh you want to shave bro my heart would jump out of my body like oh i'm like oh fuck because it's not it's it's hate it's people that don't like me will yeah. comment like it's Always. not even like people that like me or yeah. like or your me. followers yeah it's yeah. just people that have bad vibes mm-hmm. and when you read them stuff about you or you know it takes a, a, a something can happen and mm-hmm. it doesn't even blow mm-hmm. but once the blogs hit it pick it up and stuff like that yeah. it just takes it out of proportion and all the people that have been that want to say bad stuff about you mm-hmm. they want to say bad stuff this is their this is like yeah, yeah i can do it now I can, I can type it it's my moment now i can say something that she'll definitely see so mm-hmm. yeah it's hard like i that i just thought i've been feeling bare restricted for mm-hmm. the whole year and yeah it's been yeah do you feel like you're ever going to get to that point where you bring back the authentic real marion musa onto your platform um definitely i feel like eventually i was saying to my assistant before because she understands yeah. like literally little things like i don't i'm not trusting of people i work with anymore really because of that filler thing the girl that did my oh hair. yeah because you yeah. told her not to yeah i kind of told something. her not yeah. to post it she still posted it and it was just so annoying because it's like why did she do that i think you was i think you know sometimes when people know have like an idea like oh you know Mariam they get a bit excited not that not that I feel like I'm this amazing person mm. like at all mm. but I think she just got a bit excited she wanted to showcase her work the yeah. hair was banging oh, okay honestly I can't mm. I can't fault her the hair was banging but I don't think she understand mm. that what it done to yeah. me yeah. and she didn't understand what, when I told her oh please delete it because a lot of her was like well because my thing was I'm happy to reshoot it with you yeah. when my fill is like dissolved yeah. and I give you as much content I'm that's how I yeah. am like I give credit and whatever yeah but um I don't think she was hearing that she was yeah. hearing the fact that well I've done your hair and I need to post it and mm. I was like no I'm not saying you can't post it like I, I will take the minute. photos yeah. I just need a minute and she didn't really understand that and yeah. obviously when you see when you see a picture of you that is actually really bad and you mm. know and because I knew it was bad mm-hmm. I, I knew it was bad so of course it was bad I wasn't going to show that when I see something that's really bad and it's on Twitter and mm-hmm. it's screenshotted like that picture will always be on the internet I have to understand that all the time one time you know the thing on Instagram someone was like oh you know they show me a picture someone was like to me mm-hmm. oh show me a picture of you of the worst you looked and I wanted to show that one oh like, my nah. god I don't want to resurface again yeah because before if I didn't honestly like, before I would have shown that mm. I've shown myself with my bad um ingrowns I've mm. shown myself yeah when I had bad yeah, makeup yeah. like the seven the seven years ago you yeah like, didn't I, care. like I didn't care like yeah. that's who I was seven years ago wow. get over it I'm, I'm not that person anymore like but I'm still inside I'm still the same person so yeah. why do people feel some kind of way mm. about certain things so yeah do you see yourself staying on having or continuing your online presence with all these things that you feel internally i think i will because i'm a lot stronger than i give myself credit for yeah and i know it's a phase i reckon when covid is like done Mm -hmm. i won't i won't be focusing on my insecurities or focusing on things like like things like i know my hands and stuff like that Mm -hmm. i can be myself and feel comfortable it's just because i don't feel comfortable so how do you feel like because I think sometimes the thing about social media is it, it has a way of making you, because you start off very much yourself, you know, yeah. you are Mary Musa, you're bubbly, you're this, you're that. And then as time goes on, it makes you want to pivot and because of people's comments and negative comments, you know, into something that you might not be. And I think one thing that you've done, and I don't know if you give yourself enough credit for this, is like you've kind of maintained yourself um, oh, to you. kind of be this like authentic, fun, happily, oh, happy, bubbly, you. you know, Mariam. How do you feel like you 
although I know you do have your difficulties in it, um, how do you feel like you allow yourself to remain you in this bubble that is continuously criticizing you to do something else or um, be someone else? Like I say, family and friends, yeah. because um, I just go back to uni and how, how like I was so confident, I was so happy, like, I just had such a good circle yeah. that I don't it's, I don't explain it like when you have good friends mm -hmm. like keep on to them don't don't focus on clout and what you can gain from people mm -hmm. the reason why I've still got the same friends because I've stayed, stayed the same mm -hmm. person they they stayed the same I haven't got ahead of myself mm -hmm. I don't think I'm above I'm not going for new friends just because of followers why I've got good friends yeah. so they've kept me very level headed and if yeah. I'm even mad you think they won't tell me <laughs> mad you just chill out like <laughs> you just have friends like that you can't yeah. be tiptoeing around friends yeah. and then it gets messy mm. my friends can we can never have a public argument what why because why yeah why would I have a public do you know what Absolutely, I mean there's yeah. no way mm -hmm. no way so. Go, going from like the Mariam who's left H&M to to go on and have this like online presence and build this community and this is now going to be your full-time job do you feel fulfilled doing what you do now genuinely <sighs> no Really? I feel 50 50 I feel fulfilled mm. but I, I feel I feel like I'm always working to be better in work anything I do any decision I make is yeah. always kind of linked to work mm. because I really I've always wanted to achieve in whatever job I'm doing the highest level that yeah. was like with H&M yeah. with everything I done every job role I done I always wanted to progress and achieve the highest level yeah and I think with with um, Instagram, YouTube, mm -hmm. I still haven't got it yet. I still wow. feel like, that's what's so mad. Like you probably think, oh man, you achieved mm. so much, but I don't see that. I see it as, okay, I've done all right. Mm. I've, do I've ticked it, but what I'm trying to get is big. Like I do want to represent black girls. I do want to um, be that. I do want to be like, like a good role model. Mm. It's just hard to be a good role, to feel like you want to be a good role model when you don't feel like people see you as that sometimes. Wow. Yeah. I don't Why do you like feel like people don't see you as that? Because I'm so whitewashed. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I did not know you felt that you felt yeah, like that. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't talk about stuff like this. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. this is probably the first time I've spoken about it mm -hmm. unless I'm talking to my friends. Yeah. Because obviously it's private. They mm -hmm. know how deep it's I feel lot. about yeah. things. Yeah, so sometimes I feel like that. So, mm. yeah, and obviously, like, little things, like, I don't explain it. Like, I know I'm not, like, say for example, you compare me to Nella and Giola. Yeah. I'm not like them. Mm. We're very different. But yeah. that's fine. This mm -hmm. is how and I am. you have. don't need to be I don't that need like, to be like them. that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, they love me because of this. You I, are married. Yeah. I've yeah. never really had issues with anyone mm. in the industry. I don't need to because I'm not a problematic person. I'm yeah. who I am. I have amazing friends. I have amazing work friends. I yeah. have all of that. Mm. So, yeah. Do you know what will make you feel fulfilled? Completely. You said 50-50. So, what would it be that would give you the 100% the fulfillment? fulfillment? Um, and do you think it's in this space? Um, I definitely know that when I have a family and stuff, I feel fulfilled. Mm. Definitely. Um, so maybe that part of my life would make me feel like, oh, is it worth it? Like, mm. do you know what I mean? Like, because right now, like, I'm working to help obviously people dress well, yeah, makeup tips, things like that. Mm. What, like, I don't know, it's just, it's not enough. I'm not mm. the most academic person as yeah. well. So yeah. I know sometimes, I don't know, do you ever feel like people get onto you for talking about serious things? I'm like, listen, <laughs> if I say it wrong. I can't even say it, but you know what I'm talking about when everybody yeah, was like, yeah, what, are you, yeah. why are you not talking, talking. about this? And we were like, um. um. And I remember one time um. I spoke about something, yeah, and this girl was like, you you said it wrong. You were meant to say it. And I was like, I'm not saying anything again. I, wow. You missed the whole point. Like, I was trying to actually speak on a topic yeah. and show how angry I am. Okay, mm -hmm. fair enough. I didn't word it right, yeah. but I'm speaking about something, and someone still found fault. So, yeah. Where do you see the happy, fulfilled, perfect in the perfect world? Where do you see Mariam in five years' time? Okay, in an and ideal world. Like? So I'm twenty. What's five and seven? So eight. What I'll be thirty three. Yeah. Oh, wow. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, is it not thirty three, sis? <laughs> it's like, it's like, I was 32. <laughs> she was only 32. <laughs> so my best oh friend too. Um, yeah, 32. Um, I would love to have kids by then. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, it'd be nice to be married. Yeah. Um, have my home with my partner. Like, yeah. I know everyone's like, yeah, I bought my home, but I've always been brought up and how I wanted to be is mm -hmm. I'd love to buy my first home with my husband. Yeah. And then then I'll buy my own little project if I want to. That's just, mm. I'm just that person, that. you know, settle down. Yeah. That's the go that's what it's always been. Mm -hmm. Get my career, I've got my career. I'm, I feel like I'm a good space in my mm -hmm. career. Mentally, yeah, it could be better, mm -hmm. but everything else is good. So this is 100% the career that, the career space that you want to stay in? Um, or do you see yourself actually pivoting from that? I mean, I would definitely love to have my own business. Yeah. Um, 
I've had a lot of experience in this game, yeah. seven years, even mm -hmm. before that, before people knew what social media was, I was watching it, do you understand? Mm. I knew I wanted it. Mm. So I understand it enough, I've, and it'll be good to kind of have a business where I already know everything now. Mm. I know about PR, I know mm. about launches, I know about things like that. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to kind of push that into my own thing and yeah. help a lot of black girls. Yeah. Actually pay, I want to be in a position where we pay whatever business I yeah. own, maybe five, 10 years, I'm paying black girls. Mm like racks so like, that, that is I your mean, priority yeah then. definitely definitely yeah this has been such a good conversation I know, I think. oh thanks bro. <laughs> no it was nice thank you for having me ah we're done <laughs> oh, look, I Jesus. Was so